Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And here we're going to do an example calculating the Lebesgue Stilches measure with a given distribution function. So in this example, this will be our distribution function. And it looks like this. It, now notice that I raised the zero point up. And then so this might be minus one or something. And that's so you could see that when we're below minus one, it's zero. When we're from minus one to zero, it's that straight line. And when we're from zero to two, it's this quadratic. <laughs> and when we're two or more, it's nine. Okay. So given f, which is this function, calculate mu, the Lebesgue Stilches measure, for the following sets. So let's calculate it for mu of 2, the, the point 2. So that's this. So in a previous video, we showed that that is f of 2 minus the uh, f of 2 minus. So f of 2 is this value, 9. And then the left limit, as it approaches 2, is 6. So the Lebesgue Stilches measure is 3. <clears throat> Now, for this interval, minus one half to three, you know, closed on the left, open on the right. So minus one half, let's look at three. So we're way out here at three, so it's nine. You know, or in previous notation, since this is open, it's f of three minus, but it's continuous out here, so it's just f of three, which is nine. And then this one is, is since it's closed, it's f of minus one half approaching from the left. So minus one half here, but it's continuous, so it's just that value, which is one half. And so the answer is eight and a half. Now the next, the inner the mu mu, the measure of these two sets, the union of these two sets, and they're disjoint, so it's just the it's the sum of the individual measures. And so this one here, minus 1 to 0, so that goes from here to here, and it includes 0. So it's 2, which is that. And then the minus 1 half, it's the left limit, so it's this, so it's 0. Here it's uh, from 1, which is, oh, let's do 2 first. Uh, it, so, but it's the open interval. So it is the, it's the left limit approaching 2, so it's that value. So it's 6, and then 1 is minus 3, and then add those, you get 5. And so very similarly, if we were to calculate these, the union, or the measure of the union of these two intervals, it's the sum of the two measures. And I'm just going to show the values and let you... Um, go back and calculate these on your own time. And so we get 7 and 1 fourth. Now, this one, the, the measure of this set, all x, such that the absolute value of x plus 2x squared is greater than 1. Now, doing the math here, and you know, realizing this is an absolute value, it's the union of these two sets. All x's in these two unions, they're disjoint, so it's the uh, measure the sum of the measures and then I went ahead and added the correct values for each of these and I'll let you do the mental math on that but the answer is seven and one fourth now this is a little more abstract example let mu be Lebesgue Stilch's measure of R corresponding to a continuous distribution function F so, as a reminder, Lebesgue Stilches of this right semi-closed interval is f of b minus f of a. That's the Lebesgue Stilches. So, if a is a countable subset of the real numbers, show that mu of a is zero. Now, note that since f is continuous and we're taking the measure of a point, it is f of x minus the left limit of f of x. But since it's continuous, that is just f of x, so it, the difference is zero. 
So if we let A be this countable set, and mu of A is what we're interested in, so it's really the union of these points, but they're all disjoint, so it's the sum of the measure of each point, but each point has measure zero, so the sum is zero, and, and so then we're finished. So if the measure of A is positive, you know, greater than zero, must A include an open interval? And the quick answer is no. And here's a more thorough answer. Let's let mu of R, that's going to be F of infinity minus F of minus infinity. That's the measure of the, the set R. Now also let Q, script Q, be the rational numbers, and let script P be the irrational numbers, which is the real numbers minus the rational numbers. That's the irrational numbers. So let's let mu of R be some value C. Now C can be infinity or it can just be a constant. Now the real numbers is the union of the rationals and the irrationals, Right, so and they're disjoint, so the measure of R is equal to the measure of the union of these two sets, but they're disjoint, so it's the sum of, of the measures of the sets. But this is uh, countable, so this is zero, and then this comes over, but this is saying that mu of R is equal to mu of P, where P is the irrationals, but mu of R is C, and that's greater than zero. And there's no open interval in the irrationals. So this can happen. So now let's let mu of A be positive, you know, or greater than zero. And the difference between the reals and that set equals zero. Now must A be dense in R? So this set. And it, th this is an intriguing question because... If we restricted ourselves to the Lebesgue measure, then the answer is yes. A must be dense in R for this to happen when we're dealing with the Lebesgue measure. But this is the Lebesgue Stilches measure. So it's an interesting question to see if this is can happen and and A not be dense. Okay, so let's let A be a subset of R and Oh, and A is dense. So let me give the definition of dense. And this is actually the definition I like. So dense is a sub, A is dense in, in, is a dense subset of R. If every element in R, the interval of X minus epsilon and X plus epsilon. So no matter how small an interval of every point in R, it contains a point in A. The intersection is not zero. So that means A is dense in R. And so that's what we're asking here. So if the measure of A is positive and the measure of R minus A is zero, must A be dense? Okay. So let's let F of X be this distribution function. So from when we're great, when we're less than A, less than or equal to A, it's some value C, C1. Uh, if we're greater than or equal to B, it's C2. And if we're between, it's that straight line between C1 and C2. So this is a distribution function. So let's let A be the interval from A to B. So the measure of A to B is F of B minus F of A, which is going to be C2 minus C1, which is positive, right? Now, right, because this is an increasing function, so that has to C2 has to be greater than C1. So then B, which is the difference, so R minus A, which are these two open intervals. And so the measure of R minus A is the measure, you know, since these are disjoint, it's the sum of those measures. But this measure is... Um, yeah, so it's F of A or f of infinity minus f of a.
minus f of infinity minus f of a. But this is zero, right? Because it's constant over this region, and it's constant over this region. So a constant minus the same value is zero. The constant minus that same value is zero. So the answer is no. It doesn't have to be dense, right? A is not dense in R, and B and R minus A is zero, and A is not dense. So the answer is no. Um, okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.